Hi, my name is Winslet, and welcome to my Kirko Doctrine tier list. At the beginning of April, I posted my complete Doctrine tier list, which looks like this. And today, I'm going to be talking about why I placed each of the Kirko Doctrines where I did. While I expect future expansions and patches will change how good some of the Doctrines are and add a few others, the Doctrines kept the values they had at the beginning of the game until the Tyrannosaurus patch, so about nine months. Um, so I expect these numbers to stay the same for a while. And even if they do change soon, I uh, expect these tier lists to remain useful, especially to new players who just want to know generally what's a, a good thing to go for and what is something that you shouldn't go for and, and what phases of the game you should be thinking about those things. There are 97 doctrines that I could find in the game and while I'd love to talk about them all in one video I decided to break them into smaller more digestible segments like this one. So the first doctrine we're going to talk about is Hive's Embrace which is up there at the top in front because I love playing the Kirko as a friendly race. I know they have two paths essentially, fight all humans or befriend all humans and I'm, I'm typically a pretty peaceful player so I typically go for the befriend all humans or all NPC factions as much as possible. And um, not only that, Hive's Embrace is one of the few doctrines that gives you a passive influence um, income. So it's very, very special and uh, something that I'd recommend you play around with a little bit. To take a closer look at the numbers that it provides, we're just going to hop on over to the game like so. And I will search it up here using the Imperial Archives. So Hive's Embrace. Yes, happiness events are doubled, so when you get um, to max happiness in a, a colony, you'll get either twice as much energy, twice as much cosmite, twice as much influence, because now you can get influence from happiness events. And uh, yeah, I typically have a lot of happiness in my colonies. I, I know there's a lot of people who think that you should spend your workers on different resources um, and just kind of keep your happiness at neutral but I think with some of the more recent changes that you, you want to, ha to get those happiness vents and it's a little bit easier to get to them too and uh, the the secondary thing here is is really really nice almost better I'd say actually better than um, what the first thing listed in this doctrine the ability to get plus two influence for every non Kirko colony means you could get like, yeah, who knows how much, it depends on the size of the map and how many colonies you can fit on the map, but you could get like plus 30 or 40 influence just from um, non Kirko colonies. I believe that applies to each one who's not Kirko. So if you had two Vanguard colonies, I think each one would give you plus two influence very very powerful even if it doesn't the fact that you can get more than two influence by having colonies of other people's um, race that that will allow for you to get uh, more units from the NPC factions or mods from them or maybe cast some covert ops if that's what you're into um, but yeah it's, it's just a very valuable resource you only start off with plus five so getting plus two alone makes that doctrine worth it in my opinion i know it's it's tier nine but um in terms of like research it takes a while to get to but that's not really what we're looking at on the tier list um we're, we're comparing them in terms of like raw potential and then maybe if it provides a lot of early game bonuses and you can get it early then it's it's boosted a tiny bit up on the tier list the next doctrine we're going to talk about, actually, wait, no, before we do that, I want to compare this to the ones around it. Can't forget that. So what do we have around um, Hive's Embrace? It looks like we have, um, I think that's fortification efforts, efforts and native displacement, which makes sense to me. I'm a pretty big fan of fortification efforts. Let's hop on back here just to 
see what it says for fortification. I can spell, but I'd rather just have it do it for me. So the fact that you can get your colony militias to have more HP and more armor is really, really nice, but making it cheaper to produce those structures is super nice because the bigger they are, the longer it takes to make them. And um, if you can save yourself a turn or two, that means you can probably protect yourself a little bit better in a pinch. And also, by removing the energy upkeep associated with those those uh, colony infrastructures, it means that you can um, build them up early without worrying about having a, a low energy income or like an, a really severe um, negative energy upkeep that you you know have to try and manage with rewards from quests or some something else some other way generating in your city can you help you out with some negative energy upkeep for a little bit but not forever um, and that's that's quite nice but um, yeah it has limited potential that's why it's not an s tier I'd say it's better than hives embrace but just barely you can definitely make hives embrace um, better than fortification efforts now the one afterwards is native uh, displacement act which makes it cheaper to move independent armies off of places so like uh, these guys you can make them cheaper to move I don't think I can do that right this second because we haven't met them let's just meet them really quickly hello nice to meet you oh, that's a great quest placement um, but we could make it cheaper right now it costs 43 influence we could make that 33 percent cheaper that's quite a few points maybe a turn or two earlier you can grab this site with um, with the uh, with native displacement um, but getting more influence per turn is definitely more valuable than buying people off this might the native displacement act is a better early game option I mean it is lower accessibility so it makes sense um, but uh, eventually you'd want to drop it in favor of things like um, Hives Embrace. Hives Embrace is just it's so nice. I know you can't do that because Devar and Kirko are different things, but the point is is that I think um, Hives Embrace is slightly better than uh, Native Displacement Act. Now we can move on to the next one, which is Planetary Swarm. So yeah, if you're not going to play nice, you will grab Planetary Swarm probably. It is a very strong doctrine, so definitely worth considering so this just makes it easier for you to have a lot of Kirko units by reducing their upkeep um, you can have more out in the field basically 50% uh, more units you can have on the field because this is like reducing it by a third um, so yeah you can take 150 divide that math basically um, in addition, all light units are cheaper to make, so it'll be easier to get your units to to um, match your energy income or get close to your energy income. Uh, once you, you have this doctrine enacted, you'll be either able to support a lot more units or build a lot more quickly. Um, and I would I think both of those things are very, very valuable, especially if you're just attacking a lot of people, playing very, very aggressively. And even if you're not attacking other commanders, if you're just trying to clear out certain locations, it can be nice to have just bodies that you can throw at a problem. Now, what do we have around planetary swarming on our list? Let's double check. We have, whoops, wrong one. We have, um, I think, extermination protocols and advanced wildlife something rather so let's pull up the game again and see if i can find those doctrines extermination protocols yeah this is a nice one because it just gives you plus 10 percent damage no other conditions necessary but you can get extra damage when fighting against xenoplague for a moment I considered putting this one down lower on the list because um, there's a lot of things that do more damage against certain units and I actually found them to be about the same 
they weren't uh, much better than the others. But the fact that this is, doesn't have any condition, I think, elevates it up quite a bit on the list. Um, doing 10% extra damage is great and can be stacked with all kinds of different um, boosts to your damage. So I love it. I think it's amazing. Um, definitely better than planetary swarms. Like Maybe you don't need energy um, reduction. You have plenty of energy income. Boosting your damage potential in that, in my opinion, and will do more for you in that situation than getting more energy. I mean, AI might just use covert ops to steal all the way. So keep that in mind. So we, let's see. The thing on the right was, I think, the wildlife one. Yeah, this guy. And this will make it so your animal and mounted units will have more HP and more morale, and making them better in combat by either doing more critical hits or by being able to take more hits. If you have more morale, you're more likely to do a critical hit. Um, and if you have more HP, you're more likely to survive taking damage. If you uh, have a lot of animal units, that plus 50% XP gain will really help some of them evolve um, evolve into the higher tier ones. So you, you, you want this if you're playing um, Amazon and you're able to tame a lot of animals, but maybe not so much if you're not. There's definitely a lot of room for synergy with this one that can take it above uh, planetary swarming. But I think in terms of just raw potential, that energy reduction might allow you to do more than this. I think it's debatable. They're, they're pretty close in terms of um, yeah competitiveness and ranking. Next doctrine is Act of Reconciliation. So that one is for being peaceful. Now um, we can check what those values are in game. I don't remember anything about it off the top of my head. So just give me a second here to grab that. Ah, yes, another thing that gives you influence. So the Kirko have two things that can give you influence. This didn't used to give you influence. That That's a new addition that came with the Tyrannosaurus update. And I think almost puts it in the next tier above it. Um, but its other bonus really isn't that competitive. Getting a tiny little bit of in, uh, happiness for a non-aggression pact or a couple non-aggression packs or a sizable amount of happiness for an alliance with another player is okay I guess it's not terrible but if you're not able to get any non-aggression packs with any other players there's no benefit here and I find myself in a lot of situations against the AI where they just don't want to work with me of course I play on some of the hardest settings you can play on so maybe on easier settings this has more value but in my opinion um, the only thing that worth getting at this is that influence which as you know by now i'm a pretty big fan of now what's on either side of this doctrine we have imperial mandate i believe that's the paragon thing and it looks like a uh, landmark doctrine which will make it easier for you to research and um, build units of your of your take of your uh, type um, those like seven landmark doctrines that are all next to each other are all equivalent they do the same thing but for a different secret tech each I know the name of the synthesis one off the top of my head that one's something data mining So this is, um, yeah, it's for synthesis, but it's a lot like the one that we have all on the left, which I think is for the Xenoplague. It will reduce your uh, the the amount of technology or research required to unlock more techs by 25%, um, and it'll make it easier for you to build any units of your your secret tech if you're able to to unlock it and use it. Um, which is very nice, but very situational, hard to get. And by the time you got it, you've probably got most of the secret tech research that you want. I mean, 
being able to cheat produce things for less energy is great but a lot of them require a lot of cosmite and that tends to be the real limiting factor in the late game so it's it's good but it's not like even that great once you've unlocked it and uh what was the other one that was on the to the side of it? Oh, I didn't even pull that up yet. I need to uncover this so you can see what synthesis data mining even says. 25% reduction in the, your, the research required to take on the text of your secret tech. And yeah, 20% less energy to build your units. And I need to just look at this one for a second to see what I had to the left of it. Yeah, it's Imperial Mandate. So let's pull that one up next. At least I think it is Imperial Mandate. Yeah, remembered it. So I like this one a lot because it gives you influence. And because it gives you a little bit more influence than the Act of Reconciliation, I consider it a little bit better. And uh, I, I know there's a little something else that comes along with it, but it's, it's really quite negligible. It says here that if you have this active um, and you have negative reputation, no, negative popular support for bringing a war with a, uh, wait, what's that? No. Okay, so basically you can go to war without a Cassus Belle and it doesn't do anything bad for your your popular support. Your people won't get upset and try to ask you for more money for their upkeep, um, which yeah, I think is very negligible. I almost never go to war without a Cassus Belle, and if I do, it's at the point where um, I don't need more energy or I don't really need my popular support. I'm just trying to wrap up the game anyways. So you can you can not ignore that. I, I know it's not as good as the active reconciliation's other effect, but yeah, influence. Influence is good. So let's see. What did I have next on my list? It was preserving the future. So preserving the future. I'm going to have to look that one up because I don't remember what it does exactly. Preserving, I can't spell. What if I just put this? There we go. <laughs> so this makes it so that you get a lot more food um, in your colonies. And um, instead of just getting a plus 15 or a little bit from the, your center the the colony center or an end a little bit from a sector or all from your sectors um, it's just calculating all of those uh, things that contribute to your food and giving you plus 20 percent i think that is all around very nice compared to the the other ones i believe this is higher up in my tier list um where is that in terms of the other ones yeah i remember verdant and growth is Oh, Verdant Growth is a little bit ahead of it, so I must have decided at one point that I didn't like this one. Um, well, you know, actually, now that I think about it, is it better to have plus 15 food at the beginning here or plus 20%? Let's look at our numbers. If I had plus 15, it'd almost double my food income. So yeah, it's definitely better to not have this percentage increase until later on in the game. Once you're making a lot, lot, lot more food, this becomes more valuable than the other uh, doctrines that increase your food. But I guess in the early game, it's not quite as useful and you want food earlier on. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why I put that one um, down there after all the other little food sharing ones. So now that we've talked about um, preserving the future's effect, we should talk about what's around it on the list, which is a thing that gives you more experience. It's also another Kirko thing. And I consider that slightly better than more experience. Experience is nice, but it has its limits. Um, and then in front of it, we have an empire quest. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. I gotta just check. Yeah, Warmonger is that one. I think Warmonger is pretty good. I think it's plus 200 morale. Yes, against other commanders, which isn't as good as it used to be. It used to be 400 morale. Um, 
but the the reason was is because you get 400 morale for the invader one against independent armies and 400 morale for this one against the other things and i think that the benefit of um being able to get that many crits against a, another player was too good it was just way 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 too good and by reducing it to 200 you could argue that this has made this a lot worse and that it should go further down in my list but i think getting 200 morale against another player is still very very valuable especially when you consider how much psi number one it lower your your morale um and how critical hits um are calculated it's it's still worth it the 200 morale is enough to to get you more crits so you should not like take this almost always there, there's probably going to be better options available to you if you focus on on your research but it's still quite nice and i'd say better than a, a a little bit of extra food here and there now the next thing we're going to talk about was um i think dream sharing was the one that was next to um preserving the future yeah there you go you get plus 25 experience from combat which is great if you've got a lot of emergence i think that you start with emergence so i can show off that these guys yes they will evolve um when they get the prime rank into either a hidden or a transcendent those are vo both very very nice units but uh, the extra experience doesn't just benefit your emergence it benefits all Kirko units and I believe that means your commanders as well so you can get your commanders to their their max level a lot quicker which means you can get this skill which is just it's so good being able to have extra range and optimal range is, is amazing on your well pretty much any unit that can do a ranged attack even if it's just a medium attack it turns it into like a long ranged attack which means it probably does quite a bit of damage or something else status effects um, from super far away uh, and all, a lot of the Kirko units actually benefit from um, grabbing a lot of experience and expanding the, the empire relatively quickly so I think that has a lot of potential for synergy um, but it's not the only strategy for Kirko and uh, that's why it's not ahead of some of the other options i think you know getting more food could actually be better than getting more experience i mean once you're at prime rank you can't do anything with that um or anything you can't get any more experience after that point so it has diminishing returns and you get experience relatively quickly in this game it's not not a problem getting to prime rank unless you're like a tier four unit and then maybe it would be nice to have that experience gain for just getting your guys going now I don't remember on my head which one is next in the list oh we only have one more we have act of retribution so um act of retribution pretty sure i know what that one does but i would like to show you by going to the game and searching act of retribution so friendly units um gain plus 10% damage against all non Kirko units so that means if you're playing friendly and you've got units on your side that aren't Kirko they will get this damage to anyone that they're fighting unless it is Kirko which is actually yeah it's it's pretty nice um, but uh, you know I guess it doesn't get better with anything else a lot of the other things around it uh, get better than plus 10 percent with another condition and this is just like oh it's, it's plus 10 percent that's nice it reminds me a lot of extermination acts or protocols and that it gives you plus 10 percent but it can't go up to plus 20 percent under certain conditions um, and they're there you could be facing off against kirko so um there, this strategy or this thing can be countered pretty easily or not too easily um, because you'd have to have that to start off with but I guess other commanders could conquer one of your cities and then just produce a lot of Kirko units to make this no longer a viable doctrine for you to use 
right, we should actually compare this doctrine to the ones that are um, to the right and left of it on my complete doctrine tier list. So it is the last one on the top row for C. It is right after Bio Crusade and right before Techno Clost uh, Crusade. Um, and to show those off, we will go back to the game. Just search Crusade. This should pull up the numbers we need to see. So, Bio Crusade is slightly better. While you need to be fighting mechanical or cyborg units to get that plus 20% damage, and the other, it's easier to apply the plus 10% damage that you get from active retribution. The fact that you get this extra little thing for your mounted and animal units, I think, makes it easily better. I, although you could argue that the Kirko one is better just because it can apply to more units or it's easier to get it, it to apply to more units. Technoclaws Crusade I think though um, it's pretty clearly worse than Active Retribution because you have to be fighting against mechanical or integrated units to get that plus 10% damage. Um, sure it has something extra that can go with it but it's it's pretty minor. And yeah, I think that being able to apply that plus 10% damage is just, it's, it's very, very nice. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say on this tier list. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you around. Have a good one.